Hello, BookTube, and welcome to Book the Film and June on the Range. Uh, this is my first uh, video for June on the Range, and it is, uh, well, this is the, the Library of America, four classic novels in the 1940s and 50s, and the book that I read is The Oxbow Incident, and that was uh, published in 1940, and the film by William A. Wellman, was released in 1943 with Henry Fonda, Dana Andrews, uh, Anthony Quinn, and Henry Morgan. And uh, the the uh, book I'll show you like that's you know it's a nice nice looking one, but the original first edition uh, is actually quite gorgeous. The jacket, so you can see the spine there, uh, and the the painting that's really really nice um i've never had one i've never seen uh a first edition uh the book that i originally read was a signet classic and it was this one here let me see if we get the full yeah there we go that's that's the edition that i originally uh uh read sometime in the 80s I would think it is now and I and I thought it'd reread again I I really enjoyed it the first time and I I was a little hesitant to reread it um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it again it is uh, a brilliant a brilliant book and uh, it's basically like it comes right down it's a very simple story like at least the plot it's a miscarriage of justice and that's through uh, a lynch a lynching mob uh, they 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 get word in the, in a small town in the west it's in the 1880s mid 1880s and it doesn't quite say exactly where it is but they talk about the sierra uh, so uh, i'm going with nevada that's where they they they, they set the film in a way um so, uh, and there's two cowboys that come into town and they learn that there's been some rustling going on. And then they find out that a, uh, a rancher, uh, has been shot and killed. And, uh, and it's a friend of, of one of the, 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 uh, town's, uh, people that are in, in, in the, in the, uh, bar, in the saloon. So they want to create a posse to do it, but it's, it's basically a lynching mob. And uh, they go out and they find the three and they do lynch them. And like, you know, the evidence is, you know, against them. The, the evidence is against these three, clearly. But they don't wait until, you know, checking on things. Uh, they just make the decision and, uh, and, and they're lynched. That's that's the story basically, but it's how it's crafted that is is to me so marvelous. It starts out with a a really good description of sort of you know the environment, and it's it's very detailed. It's told in the first person by one. They, they, there's there's two. There's Art and Gill. Art is telling the story and his friend Gil and they're just sort of coming off a winter on the range uh, you know looking looking after cattle on the range uh, during winter so it's it's spring at some point and it's it's the afternoon and it's also a very short period of time it's uh, there you know it starts out at 2 p.m. basically uh, roughly uh, and then it goes until the next morning or uh, like the next day so it's a very short period of time as well, but there's there, there's such great descriptions of the environment. Um, you know, they, they they go into the town and in, and and they particularly uh, talk about a church that's boarded up. Uh, but through through art, everything is seen through his eyes, and every person that is met they are described not just physically they are described uh what they're like uh what their habits are what 
their prejudices are. Everybody has prejudice here, and racism is sort of rife, even from the narrator. Um, and he's very moralistic, sometimes overly so, but he, he's making moral judgment judgments on these people. So we've got like 50, 60 pages at the beginning before they even go out looking for the uh, the the uh, the rustlers or the or and and potential murderers, and he describes these people right down, so you know what they're like. And there's a card game, and we get to know what these people are like, and we know we know what they're gonna do. We know how they're gonna um, you know when, when they're up against something, we know how they're going to react. Um, and but it, it, like I say, it's it's a, sometimes a bit too moralistic, but uh, there's also an interesting thing that's 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 throughout this. Uh, well, a couple things. There's there, there's religion. As I say, the church is boarded up. There is a preacher. There there is a uh, a a minister that's there. Uh, but the church is boarded up, so th that's not explained. But he's sort of, you know, talking about, you know, the religious aspect of, you know, doing this kind of thing, the lynching. But they push him aside. They don't believe in, because obviously, because the church is boarded up, nobody's going to church in this town. And they just think he's like a little old woman. And he's like everything that anybody who is against violence is is talked is is referred to basically as a woman they're feminine and there's uh mr davies who's uh who, who's who's trying to talk around too he's not religious but he's talking about justice he goes into great detail of what justice means and what it means for me for you and, and the whole town but they call him like old grandma or something like that because he, he's he's old uh, there's also a lay preacher, a black lay preacher, who who actually finally goes on, uh, goes with them. And um, it's 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 interesting because, as I say, like the, the it's it's a western, but it's a bit different than a lot of westerns. For most part of the 20th century. Um, westerns uh I, like i'm i haven't i've not read huge piles of westerns i have read maybe a few hundred westerns uh zane gray max brand some louis lemur louis lemur uh and and just various other ones and there are commonality sort of between them there's a big adventure type thing uh with this and there, there's usually a romance and it's it's glamorous in a way. It's a romantic, uh, and I don't mean a romance like uh, it's. There's a romance usually with a woman, uh, but there's a hero, and it's it's either a cowboy who goes in, cleans up a town, or sheriffs that clean up a town, and and things like that. But there's also it's it's the romance, the big romance of glamorous type thing to a certain extent. It's not always there, but that was. That was the, really the, 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 the gist of a lot of Westerns up until that time. And also, Walter Van Tilburg Clark, I probably didn't mention his name, the, the, the Walter Van Tilburg Clark wrote this book. He was born in 1909. He, he died in 1971. He wrote this in 1938, and he was thinking about you know what's happening and as as it was it was happening in Europe and you know the injustice of the world and he wanted to talk about that i think well that's a few things that i've read like you know he he slips that in but he's telling it from a western point of view and from an american point of view uh that sort of you know uh, there's also there can be also injustice here, and we have to be careful. It, it's a bit of a cautionary tale as well. Um, and it's just it's just it's just beautifully done, uh, especially the descriptions of of 
<coughs> like the weather, the snow that's going down. Because as they go up into the mountains, it starts snowing. And that is a force as well, you know. Um, it's, it's you know, there, there, there's many of these themes that go through. But, yeah, the, the time, anybody who talks against, um, like, you know, violence, you know, a masculine thing, they're, they're feminine. Because the the one character Tetley, uh, he's he's a he's a general or colonel or something, a milita was military possibly, but um, he's called a martinet by his son, and his son um, don't really say what age, but he's probably in his late teens, and he he says something I will not have any female boys bear my name, you know, and you know things like that and. Um, it's, it's, it's all the way through in the religion part too, because Sparks, the lay preacher, the black character, he goes along, uh, with, uh, with the lynching mob to sort of give, uh, religious comfort to those and try to talk them out. And Davies, who, who's all for this justice, uh, you know, and he just keeps trying and trying and trying to get them to wait to, you know, don't do this. Don't, you know, show actual justice, you know, wait, let's, you know, let the courts deal with this. Let the sheriff come because the sheriff's off somewhere else. Uh, so, but that he's overruled, ruled, uh, Gil and Art are overruled. And they hang three, uh, a Mexican, uh, a young, a young man who's, who says he's, he's from a, a town nearby, he just moved in and he's buying cattle and he's got children. He's got a wife and he's got an old, um, soldier, ex soldier, a uh, veteran from the civil war, uh, who is a bit touched. Um, he's. It, like he says, something happened to him in the war. And I found that quite interesting. And I, I'm, I'm curious to know, which I don't know, but I wonder how many um, sort of uh, books were written around that time that were, or, or Westerns that were showing, you know, people that came out. Basically, this guy was severely sh shell-shocked or... Uh, PDS, PTSD, is that what it's called? Um, Post-stress uh, uh, disordered syndrome or PS, yeah, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that was done too much, so it's there. But also, too, with the forefront of what's going on in Europe as well, I think it's all sort of interwoven here, but you're, you're, you're getting a story that the characters seem so real. Again, as I say, sometimes he gets a little too, like the, the the but but it's it's in the first person narrative. He gets a little too moralistic, but it works because you know he pegs these people pretty good for for what they then wind up doing. Uh, and then at the end, uh, it's sort of you know the sheriff comes and it's all. You know nothing. Uh, you know it's it's like the, these these were innocent people, and there probably isn't going to be any big repercussions legally for for these for these uh, lynchers. You know they they're not going to be held held accountable for this. Uh, the the uh, the young man who bought that was lynched, uh, his name was Martin. Uh, he he's written a letter or he was allowed to write a letter to, to his wife and Davies said that he would, you know, take care of it and, and get it to her. Uh, and then when they return, um, uh, Art, who is the, the, um, the narrator, he is, is shot at, at sort of friendly fire in a sense. Uh, but when he comes back while he's recovering, uh, Davies comes in and talks to him, and Davies is so so distressed with this, and like the, the, it's through him we we see the remorse of not doing something. It's almost like you know, uh, it's it's like evil. Yeah, it, evil happens when good men do 
nothing in a sense um that's a bit trite and but but it's it's it has that essence to it of where he figures he could have done more he should have done more uh and also too we find out that the the son of this tetley who was you know browbeating his son his son shoots himself as he uh, you know they find out when he, when they return and then the father falls on his own uh you know um military cavalry sword and you know skewers himself and kills himself as well it's like you know it it's it, it's it's quite it's quite intense the ending so now 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 we move ahead to uh you know they, there was there was interest in it quite soon after the the book was published and uh William Wellman, uh, who lived from 1896 to 1975, uh, he started out doing um, silent pictures, uh, but he uh, he sort of got into Hollywood in, in, a, in a roundabout way because uh, he was a pilot in the First World War, and uh, he, he was, by all accounts, a very good pilot, but he was called Wild Bill uh, Wellman. Uh, for for many reasons, but he met Errol, oh, not Errol Flynn. Um, uh, oh, slipped my mind at the moment. But he but he met uh, a big actor that that uh, that was married to Mary Pickford. Um, I can't think of his name, but people will know this. So or look it up. Sorry, I just uh, it's just not coming to me. Uh, but you know, and he tells him, you know, if you ever want work, come see me, you know, in Hollywood. So he does after he comes back from, uh, he gets invalided out, um, uh, from the first world war and he eventually goes to, he travels around, does a bunch of other stuff. And then he eventually goes to Hollywood and he gets, he gets, you know, becomes a director and he, he, he directed wings, you know, and, and, and partially wrote this. And it's one of the, it's a fabulous, uh, world war one, uh, film. Uh, that was done in, in, in silent era. But anyway, in, in the 1940s, so now now we're at Second World War, and this is like 1941 or so, uh, and uh, there there was a director that wanted to do this or asked asked Wellman to do this and said, oh, I see a big, big picture, Technicolor, you know, uh, with uh, uh, Mae West, you know, in this, and it's like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. That's that's not the book that you showed me. So later, uh, a couple years later, about a year or so later, in 1942, he winds up buying the book, the, the rights to the book, paying the person an extra $500. So he might have spent 5,500 pounds to get the rights for the book. So he shops this all around. Nobody wants this. It's it's like a downer film. You know, it's it's a bleak, dark film. Nobody wants this. So he goes to Daryl F. Zanuck at 20th Century Fox, who they used to be friends, but they had a falling out. Uh, but he goes there, and uh, Zanuck reads the book and says, yeah, this is a great book, but it's not going to make any money. And you can do it, but it's going to have to be on a very small budget, and payment for that, in a sense, is you do two pictures for me of my choosing. You say you have no choice and, and saying no to it. So Wellman agrees and he winds up making the picture on an extremely low budget. They only have like a couple, uh, it's either back lot uh, or they, they went on location for, for a couple scenes. But a lot of it, like the, when they're in the Oxbow, when they're outside and everything, it's all uh, stage. It's, it's, it's uh, all in the studio. And it looks marvelous, the lighting and everything, because, you know, it's so bright and, and light when they're in the town and they go up into the mountains. And they, 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 again, it's like, you know, they're going up, but they're descending into darkness uh, because of, you know, wh what's happening in the story. Um, and, uh, uh, and and he made it, he did make it. Uh, for this, and there, there's there's some changes in the uh, in in the film, like the 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 preach the the, the preacher, uh, the actual minister that Osgood that I was talking about, is not in the film. 
it's it's switched to the black lay preacher lay preacher well they're calling him a preacher i think so he might be a, 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 a an adoring, ordained uh, minister i'm not sure they don't really say but he's treated again as you know offhand and stupid and they're making fun of him and uh, and everything but he goes along anyway because he thinks that you know that he does have a purpose there uh, there's, there's none of the, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, because it's the film. So that 50, 60 pages that I talked about where, uh, they, they, uh, in, in the book where they, they describe everybody clearly and, you know, you get these details. Wellman does it very quickly in like five, 10 minutes. The, the whole film's only an hour and 15 minutes long. But he does this very quickly, and it works. He, he like by a few words out of and actions that are happening, uh, in those first first few minutes, first few minutes before they ride off, you've you've pegged everybody quite well, you know. Um, Davies, do, he talks about justice a little bit, but he doesn't. He doesn't do the, you know, the, the diatribe, the, the, the very detailed amount and going through the other arguments and everybody else is not showing there's a, the, 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 uh, the card game, the poker game is not showing, uh, there is the fight between, uh, Gil, which is Henry Fonda's character, uh, and a Farley, who is a friend of the supposed Kincaid who is, who's been murdered, uh, and he, and, um, and so there, there's no love lost there. Uh, and it shows the kind of characters each of them are. Uh, and again, but again, they call, you know, they, they, they call like uh, Davis like grandma. And then the other thing is that's in the book as well is uh, there's a woman, a very masculine woman. Uh, she's described as very masculine, but she goes along on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the lynching uh, with with the mob, uh, and so, but she's not considered feminine because she's masculine. So she's she's with the violence, and they've got the you know the the the, the authoritarian uh, Tetley uh, with his son, uh, and you know they, they they've got a sort of ineffectual judge because he's also considered you know feminine because he wants justice done. And not violence, and you know they're they're talking there that oh you know we shouldn't be talking about this we just string them up, you know and that's they, they get they get heated up and heated up and heated up, and this is this is where it's really good, uh, like because through the dialogue, uh, and 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 a few actions it ratchets up the tension, uh, and then you know they they go and there's tension between. Uh, characters as well, even though they are, um, you know, uh, th they they will see eye to eye, but there there's still some tension there, uh, and it's it's just it, it's wonderfully done, uh, and I, I like another little uh, a bit with this as it starts out with Henry Fonda and uh, Henry Morgan, who's uh, Henry Fonda is Gill and Henry Fonda. Henry Morgan is is art. Uh, they walk. They, they ride into town, and as they um, as they ride in, a dog walks from the sort of top of the screen between two buildings and, and diagonally down and across in front of them. And then at the end of the film, when they leave. After they leave, the dog walks back the same way, uh, the opposite, you know, the opposite direction, but the, in the exact same diagonal line, uh, which I thought was just marvelous. And it's got to do Wellman lo loved dogs, and it might have been actually one of his own dogs that that, that uh, did that, or I can't remember the the full story now uh, behind that. But uh, but yeah, like the and, and the one thing that's added with the film as well is well there's 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 a few things uh and things taken out but added is the letter because in the book the letter that Martin writes is never is never read but Wellman wanted the the letter to be written and it's in it 
uh, Red, I mean, sorry, uh, Red, and Henry Fonda's character, Gil, reads uh, the letter. So, and also, too, because it, it's art that is the sort of the moralistic aspect in the book, and that's through his words and his narration. But in the film, you, you obviously can't do all that, so it's switched more to... To Gil, uh, Henry Fonda's character, so he verbalizes the moralizing of, 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 of things occasionally, and then he reads he reads the letter. The other thing is, the even though that they make fun of the black preacher, there's no direct uh, racial derogatory remarks to him, or to Mexicans, or to uh, native Native North Americans. There's no Native North Americans in there, but they're referred to in derogatory manners, in racial manners, and the same as the Mexicans. Uh, they, 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 are, they are referred to in a derogatory manner, and so is the black person. That is sort of thrown out of the film. That is not in the film. And another great thing with this, too, is, uh, uh, like, for, for filming-wise, is when they do the hangings, they don't like the, the the way the camera angles are there are a lot of times it depends on the character sometimes it's looking up sometimes and then it's looking down from that person uh, a lot of times but with with the hanging they're on the horses you don't really see them too much and then the horses move out you still don't see them you know that one didn't you know it, it wasn't a clean uh hanging so they have to shoot them but then the camera moves across because this is morning now. And you see the body swaying in, in shadow on the ground. And that is quite moving. Uh, also, too, a change is that, that at that time after they do this, the sheriff comes like in the book. But the sheriff... Uh, says, you know, you, you know, he talks to Davies and he says, well, you know, he wants the story from Davies because he knows he wouldn't add part in any of this. So Davies says all but seven. So the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sheriff says that basically he's going to, you know, pursue this with them. And that's not really happening in the book at all. Uh, and the other thing is, well, there, there's a couple things they do in the book uh, raise uh, uh, um, money for 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 the widow, uh, Martin's widow, and they raise five hundred pounds. And uh, but basically, what what uh, you know, Martin had asked Davies to send someone, you know, to take care of his wife. Gill and Art. Well, it's Gill's decision because it's Art is following Gill most of the time throughout the film. It's Gil's decision that we will go. We will take the money. We will take care of the family. Uh, so those are, are little things. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I've, I've really, I've really, really enjoyed the skin. I had a little, I love, I've loved the film over and over and I have no problem with rewatching the film, but I had wondered, uh, about, uh, the, the, um, uh, the book again whether it would stand up and it has it has like i say i see the little more like the the moralistic the little heavy-handedness that that's happening there but i accept that anyway um that's it for this week's uh book film and the first for june on the range uh, i'll be back with uh, another video for june on the range tomorrow uh for the three clifford simak stories uh, westerns that, that I've, I've read this week and next week will be three more Clifford Simak western stories but also um, it'll be The Searchers uh, John Ford, John Wayne film another sort of um, out of the concept of, of uh, you know westerns a little bit and even this 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 was a great western yeah I, I do want to add a, few, a bit more sorry um Westerns in, in the silent era a lot of times were pretty good. But then in the 30s, for most of the 30s up until the stagecoach in 1939 and a few others, it was mostly uh, low budget, 
And it was always good guy, bad guy, white hat, black hat, you know, or singing cowboys, that type of thing. And this was one of the first ones that really, because even, even, um, uh, uh, stagecoach had the, the older aspect of adventure, you know, hero, uh, you know, romance, uh, between a man and a woman and that kind of thing, you know, that, and this one turns it on its head and it's, so it's, it's been considered a proto sort of, or pre, um, uh, Western uh, film noir because they're like in the late forties, they began began to do this, and I think it sets up the stage for for the Searchers as something like that. So it was one of the first. So this is nineteen forty three. So as a Western picture, it's very very important. That's it. Now uh, I'm finished. Book two. I'll see you next time.